Good evening. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the pastoral priority of gospel comfort in ministry. So, what do I mean by that? Well, the comfort of the gospel, right? That we would have confidence, have a conscience that is quieted by the good news to know, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God, right? This comfort is a priority. Paul speaks a lot about comfort in the opening of the epistle, 2 Corinthians, how we receive the comfort of Christ in our tribulations, and we share that comfort with others, and God comforts us. And so you see it in the prophet, like Isaiah 40, comfort you my people. So we need gospel comfort. The saints need gospel comfort. That is the heart of Christ. And what we see in Christ is one who will leave the 99 and go get the one. Not to, not with harshness, but with gentleness. Right? This is why uh, pastors are commanded to be gentle and be apt to teach. Right? Not domineering, not being harsh, not being uh, quick to anger. Because... It's important that people speaking for God are imbued with the character of Christ. Right? What do we see Christ doing over Jerusalem? We see him weeping over Jerusalem, saying, How I would have gathered you like a mother hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. So even for unbelievers, even for people who are actively rejecting him, Jesus has this heart of compassion. I wish you would come. I desire you to come. Um uh, and that's why that's what we see in his ministry, right? We have these comfortable words like Matthew eleven twenty eight and following, where Jesus says, "Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest." Right? That is absolutely true. Jesus wasn't lying. He 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 didn't have uh, he wasn't equivocating. He meant what he said. Come to me, and I will give you rest. So if you find yourself in a position where you're like, man, I am weary and heavy laden. I can't bear the weight of my sin and shame. I can't bear the weight of, of my guilt and my past and just my life, right? The hardships, the struggles, the setbacks, everything is overwhelming for me. Jesus is saying, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. That is that is the open invitation, right? It's comfort. Come to me and I will give you rest. I will quiet your conscience. I will heal you. I will restore your soul. I will lead you in the paths of righteousness for my name's sake. He has all these promises, all these wooing promises. And the Reformation got this. This was at the heart of, this, of the 16th century Reformation which is why the Heidelberg Catechism opens up with, what is my only comfort in life and death? And of course, the answer starts, my only comfort in life and in death is that I'm not my own, but belong, both body and soul, in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? And he watches over me. Not a hair of my head can perish. So, Jesus is our comfort. And, our, and the Holy Spirit is called our comforter. And this priority, right, this gospel comfort priority in pastoral ministry is so important. Jesus is angry with who in the gospels? He's not angry with the broken. He's not angry with the needy. He's angry with the religious leaders who have developed a legal tincture. He's angry with the people who have taken the place of authority in that culture and, and they're speaking on behalf of God and they're interpreting the scriptures in such a way that God's heart of compassion for lost sinners is being shielded and cut off from the people so that people think God must want nothing to do with me. Right? But what we actually see in the Revelation of Jesus Christ, right? If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. How wonderful the Father's love, right? The Father loves us. 
sent the Son to be our Redeemer, sent the Son to be the propitiation for our sins, sent the Son in the world so we might live through Him, sent His Son into the world so that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. The Father planned redemption, right? The Father's love is the source of our salvation. So all that to say, this comfort is so crucial. It's at the heart of the matter. And again, the Reformation got this. Cranmer, in reforming the liturgy of the English church, right? he put his comfortable words in there uh, in, the, in, the sac- in the liturgy of, of the sacrament. So before you're coming to the Lord's table, you're hearing the gospel comfort, these comfortable words that if anyone sins, right, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he's a propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the whole world. So we're hearing these comfortable words, being assured that God is for me. God is for me, right? What is true faith? As the Heidelberg says, it's that confidence Right? Not only is everything God's word says true, but that I'm confident through the gospel that Christ has suffered for me and that through him I have been granted eternal life, salvation, and righteousness. So it's not only for others, but for me too. So that personal comfort, that personal assurance is so critical to the health of the body of Christ. Saints need comfort. So Jesus, in his ministry, right, it's prophetically proclaimed in Isaiah that he's going to bring forth justice to the to the Gentiles, and but then he says, but a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering flax or wick he will not quench. So Jesus has this heart committed to not snuffing people out to not being harsh, to not running people over. He's not okay with bruising the conscience of the saints because he came to be that salve for their conscience. He came to be the balm of Gilead. He came to heal, to restore, to forgive, to cleanse. And so if you're in a place of authority in the church or in in your religious community or ministry and you are you think it's your job to take the law of God and beat people with it, to, and you're okay with bruising consciences, that is a very dangerous place to be because Jesus has a different perspective and a different heart. And the only people he gets harsh with are those religious leaders who are doing, doing that very thing. So you may think you have a discernment ministry or you may think that it's your job, you're passionate to smoke out false false converts and things like this. But that is not the heart of Christ. That is a very dangerous place to be because you can quickly move into the realm of those religious leaders. You can quickly become one of those worthless shepherds who is not caring for the sheep. When you're withholding gospel comfort, when you qualify it, right? It dies a death of a thousand qualifications. When you're constantly withholding that comfort from people, then you are moving against the grain of Christ, his heart, and his ministry, and what, we, what he revealed in Scripture. And Jesus understands this, right? Jesus created us. He loves us. He redeemed us. And he knows that what we need is the rescue that he provides. He knows that we need that comfort, that we can't really actually live without it. That if our consciences are bogged down with terror and thoughts of God being our enemy or that he secretly hates us, that he doesn't, he just tolerates us, but he doesn't cherish us as his, as his prized possession. We, we end up living at a distance and we, 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 our motives are bound to be perverted because we're going to end up performing for the sake of love instead of performing because we're loved. So, it, you know, we want that secure attachment for the saints. We want them to know you are secure in the Father's love. You are 
You've been bought with a price. You're not your own. You belong body and soul to your faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He is going to keep you. He is for you. He's forgiven all of your sins. And that is so incredibly important. And it's so interesting because Paul, right, writing to the Corinthians, in that first letter, he confidently calls them saints. And then he deals with all kinds of sexual brokenness, pride, immaturity, lawsuits, spiritual uh, abuse, false teachers, right? But the only people he he gets upset with are those super apostles, right? Kind of tongue-in-cheek, like, ooh, you know, they're, they're so great. But then he comes in with a second letter, and it's all about comfort. And even the people who were put under church discipline, he wants them to be restored so that there's not they're not bearing excessive sorrow, right? That's Christian pastoring. That's the heart of a pastor. Yeah, discipline matters. People are unrepentant when they're continuing in a pattern of rebellion and they're unwilling to see it for what it is and turn from it. Discipline is necessary, but when somebody is repentant, they are restored. And the heart is for restoration and not to be overly harsh. Right? God doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. He's gracious. He's gentle. He remembers that we are dust. He knows our frame. He's, he's so full of compassion. Right? He sends his rain on the just and the unjust. God cared for those Gentile nations for all those centuries, even while they were living in alienation from him. And he was always planning and preparing for the time when he would bring those nations back home through the Abrahamic promise fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So the, as Paul writes in Galatians, we who are in Christ are heirs of the promise, offspring of Abraham, so that through Christ, the promise of Abraham, the gift of the Holy Spirit, might come to the Gentiles through faith. So this is God's heart. It's that compassion. It's that comfort. And the Reformers wanted to woo, right, allure, the best preachers, the best teachers are those who understand that the heart of Christ is to woo and allure sinners to him. Now, that doesn't mean the law doesn't have a place. Of course it does, right? The law commands and the law condemns. The law condemns us for our sin. So we need the law to bring us to that place of terrified conscience. We need the law to bring us to humility. Right? We need the law to show us our need. But the solution, the remedy, is never our performance. The solution is always, behold the serpent on the pole. Behold Christ crucified. Look to Christ. Come to Christ. And so we, we want to distinguish law and gospel. We want to use them both effectively. It's in, you know, if somebody's in a pattern of rebellion and sin, we want to bring the law to that person and, and show them. Right? The end of this is death. That path, that pattern is destructive. You're ruining yourself, your life, your marriage, your job, your finances, your future. And it's bad. But the solution is not, now go do better. The solution is, now come to Christ, that great physician. When you're broken under the weight of your sin, when the law does its work, and you're crushed and condemned, come to the great physician. He's ready to forgive. He's ready to cleanse. He's ready to make you new and empower you in a, in a new life of godliness. But Christians also are still struggling with sin, right? Even in those who are regenerate, this indwelling sin remains. And so we are battling our flesh. When we first come to Christ, we don't even think we're that sinful. Some people come to Christ crushed under the weight of their sin, obviously, Every one of us is going to grow into a deeper awareness of just how dark and, and insidious our sin actually is. And then, in that light, we see how even more how beautiful is this gospel. Right? Jesus said, those who are forgiven much, love much. So part of our sanctification is a growing awareness of our sin, so that we can have a growing awareness of our Savior. So the cross gets bigger in our in our perspective. Right? 
whoa, I really, really, really need Jesus. And praise God I have him. So today in the church, because of the conflation of law and gospel, there have been many, many teachers who have gained a lot of traction in a lot of circles, a lot of evangelical circles, who think it's their job to bring a kind of legalism to the saints and they're going to break they're going to be harsh and now is the time to drop the hammer now is the time to make the saints doubt that they belong to Christ make people question whether or not they can come to Christ take that comfort away because they're not performing adequately and then use that comfort as like a carrot. Like, well, if you would perform to this expectation, then you can have the comfort. But that's not going to work. The comfort has to come first, right? Yes, we need to be broken by the law. But once we are, we just have to receive Christ. We need to have that open-handed, empty-handed faith. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. The faith that we are saved in initially is the faith that we persevere in it's all Jesus I have no other hope I have no other plea and and we have a deepening awareness of that and so instead of pointing saints to their performance to be like well if you haven't had a quiet time in six months you must not be a Christian rather you can say hey God's word is a light to our path a lamp to our feet God's word is good. It's good for our souls, right? It makes wise the simple, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Like this is this is how we have knowledge of Jesus Christ, right? We wouldn't know who Jesus is if it wasn't for what's been revealed in, in Scripture and passed down to us from the apostles. So we need scripture, and scripture's good. And so if somebody hasn't been reading their Bible, or maybe they haven't been attending church. Like We want to confront patterns like that in our lives, but we want to do so in a way that says, hey, this thing is destruction, this thing is bad, and woo people back. Because that's what Jesus does. So, hope that's encouraging. The comfort, the comfort of the saints is a priority. And the best pastors have this right pastoral ministry is a gift and a calling of the, of the holy spirit and true pastors have this kind of heart god grows it in them and they're appalled by the thought of bruising consciences and running running roughshod over over people so there's a lot of well-intentioned evangelical pastors out there who have been malformed by bad teaching in the church, that conflation of law and gospel. And so even though it probably at a gut level is like uncomfortable, they're still abusing the sheep uh, in ways just because they haven't been liberated from that error. And that's one of the that's one of the reasons why good theology is so important. It's not so important so that you can check the box and be in the right tribe and have the best doctrine and, and woohoo, look at me, I believe everything that's right and I'm if you want to be a real Christian, you gotta be just like me. It's nothing like that. It's for the comfort of the saints. Sound doctrine is for the comfort of the saints. It protects them from error and it gives them Jesus and it frees them. And so that freedom that we have in the Holy Spirit, that freedom we have in Jesus Christ, that freedom we have in our conscience, the freedom that was recovered by the Reformation, right? That Martin Luther was so great at bringing to people. He could counsel so well because he had experienced that terror of conscience so deeply. And when justification by faith alone was recovered by the church with clarity, right? People like Thomas Bilney said, my weary bones leaped for joy right william tyndale in his uh introduction to his bible he talks about the gospel 
how it's that which makes men merry and gladdens the heart and makes them dance and sing for joy. So that's my heart in this video. I want people to rediscover the gospel. I want people to, I want pastors to realize that the comfort of the saints is to be their priority. Yes, you have to shepherd. Yes, you have to use the law of God to confront. But when the law does its soul crushing work, and it brings people to the end of themselves, when it exposes all that sin and people are repentant, you give them the comfort of Christ. It's not your job to separate the wheat from the tares. God will take care of that in the end. It's your job to give Christ to your people. And so if you're not, if you're in a church where you're being beat up by the law and you're not being given that gospel salve, I would encourage you to maybe find more resources like Jerry Bridges' books about the gospel-driven life. Um, well, that's Michael Horton's book, Gospel-Driven Life, but uh, the gospel for real life is Jerry Bridges. But there's some excellent resources out there about how to apply law and gospel to yourself. Uh, if you're more heady, you could get into Martin Luther's um, commentary on Galatians, where he really unpacks the distinction between law and gospel and how that applies to our our conscience there's there's so there's such a rich theological heritage from the reformation bringing this comfort and freedom to the saints obviously the heidelberg catechism would be a great place to start um so all that to say the the prophet said comfort you comfort you my people god's heart is to comfort you to bring you gospel comfort now, when I say comfort, and I'm not saying God's heart is to bring you luxury and a new car and a nice couch, it's to bring you Christ, it's to comfort your conscience, to comfort your soul. Um, this has nothing to do with the prosperity gospel. It's about Christ being given to his people and being received by them for their joy and welfare, right? It's the gospel being received uh, without being mixed with error and without being mixed with law. So I hope that's encouraging. And uh, if you're a pastor and you're watching this, I just pray that you would grow in your ability to distinguish law and gospel and apply that to your people well, because that is how they will grow. And that's how you care for their souls well. And that's how you set them free. And as Martin Luther said, if any man can distinguish law and gospel, he should thank God for he's a theologian. So be comforted. Weary saints take heart because God is for you. And Christ is for you and his heart is to gather you to himself and his invitation is always open come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden I will give you rest so be blessed